Yes part 3 is here no wasting time I'm gonna just start me laughing my ass off listening to such a intro. Chapter 4. The Fall of the Dragon. President, are you sure about this? Kiba asked with concern. All the members of the club looked at Rias with a raised eyebrow. Of course I do. It's the only way to stop Issei from being distracted by trivialities, can you imagine what could happen if in the middle of a raiding game a woman strips naked in front of him? Kaneko put a snack in her mouth and looked at Rias seriously. I understand your concern, President. But, remember that the familiar kingdom is fraught with danger for Issei. That could mean losing a very important piece of her equipment. Rias just waved her hand in disdain. Don't worry, nothing happened to him. And if something happened to him, maybe that would change his attitude a bit. You should be more careful with those actions, President. I know you can treat him however you like because he is your servant, but remember that you can't afford to lose strength over stupid things. Especially at this time of year. Akino clarified with a rather serious tone, something out of the ordinary for her. Rias gave Akino a sharp look. He didn't like being told what to do by his servants, but he couldn't help but think that he was right. There are a few months left. If I can get the Sekiryote to increase its power, it would be a guaranteed victory. Rias would think with a hand on her chin, to then look up with a smile. It's still a few months away, so you shouldn't worry about it, Akino. Everyone else just smiled at Rias' answer, except for Asia who didn't understand exactly what she meant. Excuse me, President, but what will happen in a few months? Rias would give Asia a very serious look because of his question. It was something he didn't like to remember, but he would have to tell her. You're welcome to hide it until the last second. Chapter 4. The Decay of the Dragons. Issei was sitting on the ground and leaning on Tiamat's neck as they both continued to laugh, but at a much more normal pace than at first. The dragon was still upside down on the ground, although she had already stopped hitting the ground hard with her hands. Apparently, the euphoria of the moment was already gone. By dragons, my stomach hurts so bad. I haven't laughed like that in a millennium. Tiamat would exclaim as he grabbed his abdomen with one of his paws. Issei looked up with a smile and leaned even more into the dragon's neck. Uff, I don't think I've ever laughed like this in my whole life. Issei looked at one of the eyes of the dragon that was looking at him penetratingly, as if she wanted to study her soul. I think it was because of your laugh. It's too contagious. Issei said with a huge grin between his teeth, making the dragon's eye widen a little at her words. Issei got a bit confused when Tiamat looked up and her smile changed to a serious expression. At least it wasn't a furious expression, like the one she had at first. You still haven't told me your story. This statement made Issei look at her in surprise. The dragon gave him a look. You know, I already told you mine. It's only fair that now you tell me yours. Anything is better than they keep laughing at me. Deidre would interrupt with an annoyed tone. Quiet, underdeveloped lizard. Tiamat's serious expression curved into a smile after saying those words. Deidre grumbled under his breath without hearing anything in particular. He only seemed to lament that Tiamat had found his weak point, and that weak point was his pride. Issei's deep and melancholic sigh made Tiamat and Deidre leave their discussion for later and pay special attention to the brunette. Before starting I would like to know, what is life and love for you? At Issei's question, Tiamat looked up, unable to find an answer. I don't know, it's not, something that can be described physically. You just feel great, and then you want to die. The out-of-context response that Tiamat gave made Issei shake his head. Issei leaned even more on the dragon's neck and positioned both hands behind her neck with a serious look. I guess you're right. It's not something that can be easily explained, but they are concepts that are related to each other. To me, life is like a drink, it makes you feel great, but if you try to taste more than you can swallow, it'll just kick your ass hard. As for love, it's like a drug, it feels amazing, but it can be incredibly destructive if you don't take the right one, oh if you get blinded by it. Tiamat looked up with some confusion. I understand what you mean, but how are life and love related? Issei clenched his fists tightly behind his head, something Tiamat noticed. Because drugs can screw up your life. Issei would give a loud sigh and jump up, turning his back on Tiamat. That's what happened to me. I tasted love and became completely addicted, totally blinded myself and couldn't see the true intentions behind my girlfriend. 
She turned out to be a fallen angel, and completely wrecked my life, killing me. Issei would cross his arms before turning around with a smile. But someone helped me, and thanks to that person I got a new life. Obviously, it's impossible for my scars to go away completely. Issei put a hand to his heart. In fact, they still hurt. But I won't achieve anything by regretting the rest of my life. If they gave me a new life, the only thing left for me is to try a new drink and keep moving forward. When I feel like throwing up from getting drunk, I'll just have to put up with it. Nobody has a life without ups and downs, after all. Wow. That's the only thing Tiamat could say when hearing Issei's story. Definitely, he had had a much worse time than her, since not only did the woman betray him, but she also killed him. Although she was more impressed by something else. How can you keep smiling, after going through something like that? The dragon would ask, finally getting up from her previous position. Before Issei could reply, Diedrag interrupted. Remember that he was a human, Tiamat. He doesn't feel with the same intensity that dragons feel. Tiamat regarded the talking gauntlet with a frown. You're right, I had forgotten about that detail. Issei was surprised at the answer, because she had thought that Tiamat would taunt Diedrag again. What are you talking about? Issei asked with great curiosity. Since I see that the underdeveloped lizard is still useless, I'll take it upon myself to explain it to you personally. Tiamat would say seriously, making Diedre grumble again under his breath. Issei pointed to himself with a nervous smile. Does that mean you don't want to kill me anymore? I pity you. Hey. Tiamat's response made Issei blink. Tiamat stared at him with her typical serious expression. As you heard, even though you are not a dragon, I find it incredible that you have gone through something similar, even worse than me, and you can still be so happy. Tiamat would have a glint in his eyes, something Issei would pick up on. That made me rethink a few things, if a mere human can get over it, why can't I? Tiamat looked down with a hint of sadness, something that did not go unnoticed by Issei. Besides, I've also realized that this is doing me a lot of harm. I'll never stop hating Diedrake. But like you said, the hatred has so permeated me that I've been alone for a millennium. I guess when you told me, I really figured it out. Am I really going to spend the rest of my eternity hunting down that asshole? I thought, Issei would cross his arms and give her a chuckle. It's great that you think so. Tiamat gave, Issei a small smile, only to be surrounded by a great glow. Something that impressed the brown haired a lot. Before we start, I'd like both of us to get comfortable. The icy glow that surrounded Tiamat disappeared, causing Issei's jaw to drop in complete shock. Now, the big A powerless dragon had changed her figure into that of a mature woman with a stature a bit taller than Issei's. She was wearing a completely white shirt, along with jeans of the same color that tightly squeezed her legs. Oh her shirt was missing a button at the top of it, revealing a small part of her cleavage. Worst of all, her breasts seemed incredibly firm and soft, they were even bigger than Rias's, and it was very easily noticeable. Even so, her legs and butt were not far behind. In fact, it could even be said that they were sexier, since she had a large, but moderate butt that clung tightly to her jean giving the image that it was very malleable, just like her thighs that seemed to be completely fleshy and soft, just like her butt and breasts. But what was really incredible about all of this was that her body fell short of the beauty that her face gave off. She had creamy skin that was beautiful, along with a softness even higher than wool. Her face seemed to have been carved by the gods themselves, along with her deep blue eyes and her beautiful expression, which gave off an impressive seriousness, making everything around her give it a mysterious touch. Her hair was a lighter blue color than her eyes. She moved freely and with great grace until she reached below her waist. It looked incredibly silky and shiny, giving off another great aura of beauty to her entire body. W wow. Issei just stared at her with wide eyes. The most beautiful woman she had ever met by her criteria was Rias, and this woman made the redhead look like the ugliest woman in the world. Tiamat crossed her arms under her breasts and raised an eyebrow. Why are you looking at me like that? Do I have something weird on my face? Issei took a step back as he continued to admire her beauty. And it's not that. I just didn't know dragons could shapeshift. Tiamat raised both eyebrows at the answer. Don't you know that dragons have human form? Tiamat put her hands on her hips and sighed heavily, then looked up seriously. 
We'll be around for a while. Issei snapped out of his trance and gave her a chuckle. In that case, Issei tossed the large backpack forward, causing Tiamat to raise an eyebrow. Line jump. Delicious. He thought Tiamat after taking a bite of the sandwich prepared by Issei. A small pleasant smile appeared on his face, showing his small canine teeth to the outside, giving Issei's eyes a rather tender appearance. They were both sitting across from each other on a blanket, simulating some kind of picnic. They were at the exit of the cave, the ice had already disappeared courtesy of Tiamat, because Issei was shivering with cold a few moments ago. Tiamat set her sandwich aside and returned to her serious expression. Well, what do you want to talk about first? Issei looked at his sandwich with a thoughtful look. I'd like to know why dragons have a human form first. Did you pay attention to my body when I was a dragon? Issei just nodded. So I suppose you remembered that it didn't have any reproductive organs, right? Issei looked down with a small blush on his face. I hadn't looked at it in such detail. Issei looked up in surprise. Wait a minute, are you telling me that? Tiamat nodded seriously. That's right. Dragons always resort to this form when it comes to reproducing. Although it carries a danger, since our powers are reduced by 30%. Issei gave her an embarrassed smile. So how do you take care of your babies? Tiamat bowed her shoulders. My mother never. Explained to me, and she hasn't had a child either. In fact, she hasn't even had sex. A small awkward silence rose between them, even making Tiamat nervous. The other thing you wanted to know, was about the emotions of dragons. The dragon's question broke the awkward silence, causing Issei to nod quickly. Basically, dragons are the most sensitive species there is when it comes to feelings. Just so you understand, if we feel joy, we feel it ten times more, if we feel passion, we feel it ten times more, if we feel sadness, we feel it ten times more. More, if we feel hate, we feel it ten times more. In fact, for that very reason the fall of the dragon originated, because we entered a state of depression so great that we ended up dying because of it. The good thing about this, it can only happen to you if your boyfriend or girlfriends betray you or die. It also has a factor in favor, and that is that if you suffered it once, you become immune to the disease, because your body will have already adapted to the conditions he previously suffered from. But that doesn't mean you won't be devastated if you lose your partner. Issei rubbed at his hair in surprise. Okay. That sounds very complicated. Tiamat gave him a serious look, making Issei jump a bit. You don't have to worry about it. Only dragons have these characteristics. You have the underdeveloped lizard, but you're still a devil. You may acquire some dragon abilities, a even have a dragon aura, but you won't be a dragon. Oh less you might want to try it, but I don't recommend it. Issei looked at Tiamat with great curiosity about the last thing mentioned, but he didn't say anything about it. In fact, you would have to worry more about yourself. After all, being a devil doesn't guarantee you eternal life. You still have to face the other heavenly dragon, and that's not the only thing you need to worry about. Tiamat frowned making Issei pay special attention. There is also the Dragon Slayer. Issei blinked in surprise upon hearing that name. From your reaction, I can see that you've already been told something about it. Tiamat grabbed the sandwich and took a bite, then looked up to remember. He is a very dangerous fellow. He was created by the three factions a millennium ago to destroy all dragons. It is true that to us, devils, angels, and fallen angels are nothing more than a cockroach, with exceptions. Saying that last word, a shadow of a woman appeared in Tiamat's mind who had about ten black wings with piercing red eyes. The problem, is that even if they are cockroaches, if you put together the power of the three factions in a single subject, it makes it somewhat troublesome. This is how Brand Kangleman came to be, an experiment that served to eradicate all the dragons that were around beneath the Dragon Kings. Very few survived, even two of the four great Dragon Kings died at the hands of those scum. Although Brand was the main dragon slayer. And if it hadn't been for him, they would never have been able to kill two of the strongest dragons that ever lived. Dragon Kings, Issei asked with great intrigue. Tiamat gave him a somewhat proud look. That's right. We dragons are a species that has a huge difference in level between us, for that very reason there are scales. In the fifth scale, there are the weakest and least intelligent dragons, known as dragliers. Thanks to them, that the species still has a chance to survive, 
but being so weak they became the familiars of the demons, in exchange for living in this place. In the fourth scale are the dragons, here you could find weak or very strong dragons. In fact, Brand was in charge of killing the strongest of that scale, since even the demon kings couldn't deal with them. Unfortunately, each and every one of them was killed. In the third scale, there are the dragon kings. Unlike the previous scale, these dragons have enormous power, a rarity even among dragons, and for that very reason only four dragons managed to reach such a level. Something curious to note was that although they classified with the same title, there was a great difference in power between the four. Because of this, the three factions joined together with Bran to finish off Vitra and Fafnir, the fourth and third dragon king respectively. But since they saw that they could not against the second dragon king, Tannen, they all agreed to make a pact with the dragon, giving him lands from hell in exchange for peace. But all was not rosy for them, as Bran defected from the three factions upon seeing this, and right now he is wandering to find and kill the wielders of Diedrag and Albion, although now it also represents a danger to the three factions. Basically, slaying dragons is his only ambition in life. Wait a second. You're telling me that the dragon kings were so strong that the three factions had to ally to defeat them, and even then, they couldn't take the second strongest. Tiamat smiled proudly at her genuine impression. That's right. In fact, they might have been able to take down Tannen if God helped, but apparently he didn't participate in the fight. He was supposed to have been greatly weakened after sealing Trihexa and the two heavenly dragons. Which by the way, Albion and Deidre belong to the second tier, which would be the heavenly dragons. They were so strong that it would be cheeky of us to classify them as dragon kings. Issei raised an eyebrow in confusion. Wait, if the two heavenly dragons are stronger than the dragon kings, how come they lost? We didn't lose. Diedrag interrupted. We just got confident, since we didn't know that that god had some items called sacred gear, and that he could seal a part of our soul in it. Tiamat looked at the gauntlet with a smirk. They didn't defeat them, but they did lose. Otherwise, you wouldn't be speaking through a gauntlet. Face reality, underdeveloped lizard. Tiamat's mocking smile widened even more as she heard Diedrag grumble under his breath. Tiamat directed her serious gaze at Issei. And before you ask, Trihexa was sealed thank goodness. But it also took the dragon god by surprise and I need the help of all the faction leaders to get it sealed, and I'm not just talking about the three factions, but all of them. Trihexa was a global threat, so everyone had to participate. Even so, the only option they had was to seal it in a dimensional prison. Issei blinked in surprise. How did you know he was aware of the dragon gods? Tiamat gave him a tiny smile. I guessed it. The underdeveloped lizard isn't such an idiot that he forgot to tell you something so important. The dragon gods are power at its finest. There are only three of them, though there is a rumor among the dragons that there is a fourth. At this, Issei looked at her with great interest. Great Red, the dragon god of dreams. Ophis, the dragon god of infinity. Trihexa, the dragon god of hatred. And finally, it was said that there was a dragon god of fury. Appeared. It's hoaxes, as far as I'm concerned. Tiamat took one last bite of his sandwich, rising from his comfortable seat. That's all. E. Yes. Issei would answer, absorbing all the information obtained. Tiamat would change her typical serious expression to a small smile, showing the tips of her fangs. It's been fun meeting you. I hope you have a good trip. Tiamat raised her hand from him. Issei would give her a chuckle and shake her hand. Same here. It was kind of a scary experience at first, but it's been fun afterward. Tiamat would cover her mouth with her free hand and start laughing, leaving Issei enchanted by her beautiful melody. Sorry about that, and thanks. He would say with a very grateful tone at the end. Issei would be surprised by her sincerity in the end, but she didn't comment on it. Good luck, Issei said, letting go of Tiamat's hand and turning around quickly to carry his backpack not realizing that the dragon had been looking at his hand longingly. Issei finally left the place while raising his hand as a greeting gesture, without looking back. Issei's pleased expression changed to one of complete shock. Friend. She thinks internally. I know what you're thinking, partner. And I must tell you that Tiamat is the most beautiful dragon that ever lived. Pipe quote. How could that idiot hurt her? Didn't he have eyes to see the incredible beauty in front of him? She was even willing to accept other women, as long as he still loved her, but no. 
Issei would think, clenching her fists tightly. Um, um, I understand. If I hadn't fallen in love with Delia at that time, I... Diedrake. Issei asked worried when he saw that his friend had stopped out of nowhere. Nothing. Nothing. It's just that I remembered something very funny. Issei just nodded in understanding. Partner. Won't you stay with her? Hype quote. Diedrake's worried tone impressed Issei quite a bit. I don't think it's necessary. Besides, why do you care about her? She's killed some of your wielders. That's true. But she's my kind, and, I can't help but feel sorry for her. Hype quote. Diedrake. The brown-haired man thought, quite surprised by his companion's attitude, before giving a huge smile between his teeth. You don't have to worry. She seemed really strong, so I don't think she needs my. Issei turned around to give her one last look. He felt stupid. Tiamat was still at the exit of the cave. The wind made his hair blow freely down his body. She had a serious and calm expression. But his look, his look showed only a feeling. Soledad. Hatred has so permeated me that I have been alone for more than a millennium. The memory of Tiamat's words made Issei clench his teeth tightly. How had he been so callous and stupid? Tiamat's eyes widened in surprise to see how Issei was returning with his hand raised in greeting, a nervous smile on his face. Did you forget something? Tiamat asked with a raised eyebrow. Issei looked away and rubbed his hair in embarrassment. Not really. In fact, I had come to this place to stay here in the beginning, and... And... Asked the dragon, raising her eyebrow even more. Issei finally met his eyes with Tiamat's. Well, I was wondering if I could. Yes. If you can stay. Tiamat interrupted Issei with great enthusiasm as she clasped both hands under her breasts tenderly. Issei blinked in surprise. Really? Thank you very much. She responded with a big smile at the end. End of chapter. Chapter 5. Why does it feel great to be with him? For three days, huh? Tiamat would ask as he sat in front of Issei. Issei rubbed at his hair in disgust. That's right. And it was all just because of stupidity. Issei would give a big exhausted sigh. Anyway, now it's something that doesn't matter. Issei would open his backpack and take out a couple of sandwiches, along with the fruits that he had previously received from the caretaker. It was already night. Issei had told him a little about his story about what he had done once he became a demon. She, though, omitted to speak of his companions, since Tiamat seemed quite reluctant on the subject. Apparently, she still held a grudge against him as well as Diedrake for what happened in the past, although Diedrake hid it very well. Tiamat grabbed one of the sandwiches and looked at it seriously. Tomorrow we will have no choice but to look for food. Is there something wrong with that? Issei would ask with some grace while she watched as Tiamat gave a small smile as she tasted the food. Apparently, she had a weakness for food, oh at least, for her food. Tiamat gave him a small smile, showing the tips of her fangs. Maybe you haven't noticed because you're not a dragon, but there are a lot of dragons in the area, I can tell by their aura. Tiamat would take a bite of the sandwich, making his smile a little more visible. They are very weak, but keep in mind that I couldn't even sense your presence, so you are even weaker than them. Thanks for the compliment. Issei would answer dejectedly while he watched as Tiamat happily ate his dinner. Issei rested his head on his fist as he watched with a small smile as Tiamat thoroughly enjoyed her meal. After a few seconds, Tiamat finally caught her gaze and raised an eyebrow at her in response. Ha Algo. Issei just shook his head in amusement. Nothing. Just that when I get back to my house, I'll treat you to a real dinner. Tiamat's eyes widened at the aforementioned, making Issei flustered. Though you don't have to if you don't want to. He would lighten the brown by rubbing his hair. Would you really invite me to your house? Issei was surprised by the great enthusiasm that Tiamat showed with his words. The woman was looking at him very seriously, but his eyes and his tone of voice showed great suppressed emotion. Issei just smiled at him. Of course, I don't see anything wrong with it, unless you want to go somewhere else more swanky. Ostentatious, Tiamat would ask with great intrigue in his words. For humans, what is a flashy place? Issei would take a stick that was nearby and began to draw a restaurant outside the sheets that they were having a picnic. This is a more ostentatious place. It's a bit expensive, but you will eat a delicious dinner made by a person who specializes in it. Bored, Tiamat said with a bored expression. 
Issei looked at Tiamat with a raised eyebrow, then gave her a smile and erased the drawing she recently made. He began to carve a new drawing. Then we could go to a place where we can make our own food. Issei would answer while he was drawing a park. Tiamat would rest her face on her knees as she looked at Issei with great interest. At this, Issei would chuckle a bit. You like that idea much better, don't you? Tiamat would put her listless expression aside and give him a small smile as she nodded. Without realizing it, they had both set a date for a date. Be a friendly date oh no, it was still a date. Issei would wink at him with a proud look. You'll see I'll cook you something much better than this. Sounds very tempting, Tiamat would say with a small smile. They both finally finished their dinner after a friendly chat. Now, the night began to get too cold, and they both decided to create a bonfire inside the cave so as not to die of cold. Issei put the two blankets he had in his backpack, heaving a big sigh of relief as he sat down and made himself comfortable near the fire. Tiamat just sat near the fire, just at the other end where Issei was. The minutes passed, Issei was about to fall asleep, but he was able to catch something sad from the corner of his eye. Tiamat was hugging herself while shivering from the cold. Issei was immensely shocked by what he was seeing. Tiamat. Tiamat looked up in intrigue at hearing her name. How can you be cold? Issei asked a bit worried while he removed the covers a bit from his body to completely reveal his face. Tiamat gave him a mocking smile. I'm sorry, but I'm not immune to cold. My power may be ice and ice is what keeps me warm, but I can't use my power, because it might freeze you. You know, it's like someone with fire or lava powers. Although his body is surrounded by his own flames, it does not harm him. But the external heat can affect him. Unless his power works differently from mine. Issei would look down in embarrassment. That means you're getting cold because of me. Tiamat looked at him very seriously. I've been through much worse, so you shouldn't worry about me. Tiamat would look down at him again while he began to rub himself again to get rid of the cold. Issei watched all of this with quite a bit of sorrow. He finally shook his head and smiled. Tiamat kept her eyes closed as she rubbed her body in an attempt to warm up and fall asleep. Suddenly, she felt a wave of impressive heat invading her entire body. She opened her eyes in surprise, only to see that Issei was attached to her while using the two sheets to cover both of them from the cold. Issei hugged the woman around the waist, attracting her even more to her body, making the dragon rest her face on her chestnut shoulder. She clung to her blankets a bit while she closed her eyes to feel how the physical heat embraced her completely. It felt amazing. Much better, isn't it? Issei would say with a smile as she closed her eyes to sleep. Tiamat would bring her body closer to Issei's while an imperceptible blush appeared on her face. Quote ellipsis quote. Gracias. Line jump. Tiamat would be stretching her body while absorbing the icy blizzards that came from outside. Are you sure to come out? Dragons are quite territorial, they could hurt you. He would notice Tiamat looking sideways at Issei with her typical apathetic expression. Issei would give him a smile. Don't worry, I really want to go out and explore this place a bit, and I wouldn't want you to do all the work yourself. Tiamat would face forward as she crouched down to do a stretch. Whatever you want. Issei looked away with a small blush as Tiamat's butt was pressing hard against her white jean. Besides, this might help me become stronger. Stronger. I would think Tiamat seriously. Tiamat would put her hands on her hips and turn around to look at Issei seriously. See you here in an hour. Issei just nodded seriously, only to be surprised by how Tiamat suddenly disappeared. Issei whistled in surprise. She's really fast, mate. Diedrag chuckled a bit causing Issei to look at his gauntlet with a raised eyebrow. What is so funny? Nothing. Nothing. It's just, you still don't know much about her. Diedrag would reply with an innocent tone. Whatever you say, Issei would reply dismissively. The only thing that bothered him about Diedrag was that he kept things from him, but he wasn't going to force him either. Total, she knew that sooner or later he would find out everything. Line jump. I think this one will do. Issei would say to himself while he ate a fruit that resembled a banana from the top of a tree. Since those trees were gigantic, I don't think it's necessary to state that Issei was a few meters from the ground. Issei's smile changed to a surprised look when a shadow passed over his head. Compañero, I understand, Issei declared seriously. 
I better get out of here before. Issei jumped and screamed as he was attacked by a blue dragon that was about the same height as him. The brunette landed face first on the ground and got up quickly as he rubbed his face irritably. He did not have time to insult the dragon, since he activated his gauntlet and the sound of boost. He echoed around the place as he dodged another dragon very similar to the previous one very narrowly. The two dragons got in front of Issei, giving him a huge roar. Issei put his gauntlet in front of his face and the word, boost, resounded again. It seems that they are very angry. Issei would say while he watched the two dragons very seriously. I don't know what happened, but they came directly for you. It's obvious that something has them very upset. Diedrag would declare seriously. What should we do? Issei would ask as she took a step back as she saw how the dragons began to slowly approach in a threatening manner. Negotiating in this situation is ridiculous. We're not on their territory either, so they're angry about something else. They're going to not only harm you, but also kill you. And Tone says, there is only one option, run. Issei turned around and started running at full speed. Issei rolled on the ground to dodge two magical attacks that went over his head and hit two trees, causing both trees to start falling. Both dragons reached Issei very easily and both tried to attack him while he still hadn't recovered from the previous attack. Luckily, she arrived just in time to defend herself with his gauntlet, plus both attacks hit the same place. But the strength of the dragons was much greater, so his gauntlet was severely damaged and he punched himself in the stomach from the pressure of the previous blows, causing him to spit out some saliva. Luckily for him, the two dragons had to jump back as the two trees closed in on him leaving Issei trapped below. Both dragons widened their eyes when the dust disappeared from the place, the fallen trees generated an X. When they looked in search of Issei, the chestnut tree was no longer under the two trees. The dragons roared loudly in great anger and looked around, then began to fly. Issei was hidden behind a tree as he clenched his teeth tightly in fear. He could only watch as his hand where his gauntlet was previously had three claw marks that were causing him to bleed a bit more than he would have expected from a wound that had been mostly blocked. Shit, that was pretty close. She thought about the chestnut while she looked at the two trees that were about to fall on top of him. Let's get out of here before they find us. And make sure you don't use the sacred gear, oh that might alert them to our presence. I would warn Deidre wisely. Issei just nodded seriously and started walking in the opposite direction that the dragons had gone. Line jump. Issei watched with a small smile as many exotic animals were playing in the forest with each other. There were all kinds of species. This is a good sign. If there are so many relatives in one place, it means that this place shouldn't be dangerous. It's good to know that. Issei would answer while she rubbed the wound on her hand with a small wince. Guab. Issei looked up confused after hearing a cry come from the top of a tree. The brown-haired boy rolled his eyes when he saw how a small dragon was upside down because of some lianas that had caught it, he had small scratches all over his body. The clues indicated that he had ended up in those conditions because he still did not know how to fly properly. Should we help him? Issei wondered rubbing his cheek with a finger. It's not a baby dragon, but it's still very small. It probably won't want to accept your help at first because it's another dragon, but it's still very weak anyway. Issei would get serious. How weak? I think they are close relatives to the dragon sprites, to give you an idea. Issei rolled his eyes, like that little devil who is now Asia's familiar. Do you know how bad I had it with the blue lightning from him? Issei would protest angrily. Will you let a dragon child bully you? Diedre would ask gracefully in his words. With other carriers, he would take this reaction as a concern since it could affect his image. But Issei was Issei. He couldn't take his fearful attitude seriously, since he faced Tiamat herself. Although well, on second thought, perhaps he would have been afraid if he had told him who Tiamat was in the first place. In fact, she still finds it strange that she herself hasn't told him. Diedreg snapped out of his thoughts seeing Issei had his hand a few inches from the dragon as he reached out to try and untangle the vines. I have it. Issei ripped off one of the vines that kept the dragon's mouth almost completely closed. Seeing this, the little dragon's eyes got a dangerous shine and looked very penetratingly at Issei, making the brown-haired man wonder. Suddenly, the blue-colored dragon opened her mouth and spewed out a large flame from her mouth, one after another. 
Issei began to yell and dodge all the attacks with better maneuvers than those shown in circuses. Finally, a strange sound was heard from the dragon's mouth and only a little smoke came out of its snout, indicating that he had run out of magic. The dragon fainted for that very reason. Seeing this, Issei smiled triumphantly. How did you like that, you little bastard? Issei changed his expression to a confused one, seeing that the angle with which he saw the dragon had changed a lot. His face turned blue and he began to sweat profusely when he realized that the tree he used to climb was in front of him. Ah, Issei tried to fly waving his arms to no avail, falling face down to the ground. Issei would dig his face out of the ground with a bit of difficulty, raising his face and having a completely bored expression on his face. This has happened to me twice on this day, and I've barely started the morning. Issei came out of his internal discussion when he saw that the little dragon's flames had somehow reached the lianas, and as a result, the little dragon could face a painful fall. Issei quickly got up off the ground and took a huge leap forward, grabbing the little dragon with both of his hands. The dragon opened one of his eyes with great exhaustion, seeing that Issei had saved him. The brunette was surprised when his new friend gave him a weak smile. Issei settled down to sit on the grass while some relatives surrounded him and looked at him very carefully for what had been previously demonstrated. Didrag, should we do something to heal him? Issei asked, somewhat concerned about the apparent condition of the little dragon. No, mate, he just had a lot of magic wear, that's all. The other injuries are very superficial. You can leave him here without any problem, surely when he wakes up he'll go looking for his parents. Issei rubbed at his hair with a worried look. All right. After saying those words, Issei delicately supported the dragon on the ground, to then leave one of the fruits he had obtained so far. Issei turned to leave, but was surprised when he felt how the little dragon had clung to his back while eating the fruit he had given him. Wasn't it going to take a while to wake up? Issei would ask in great surprise. Didrag chuckled to himself as he understood what was happening. Apparently he hadn't run out of magic power. He had simply gone a long time without eating. Issei would shake his head in amusement, then give him another fruit that he carried in his backpack, making the dragon smile friendly. Okay, buddy, I hope you're feeling much better by now. Issei would say with a smile while she watched how the little dragon ate the fruit, with pleasure. It's getting old though we'll be late. Didrag stated seriously. Issei slightly widened his eyes in alarm. That's right, Tiamat said we'd meet at the cave in an hour. Issei turned around and began to run, without first giving his new friend a smile. I hope you have luck finding your parents. The little dragon could only watch as Issei began to disappear among the trees. I don't doubt it for a second and began to follow him as he flew. Line jump, isn't he going to stop following me? I thought dragons were totally reluctant to mix with others of the same gender. Issei would ask with his eyes rolling. That's right, but this dragon is not male. Issei began to sweat nervously as he glanced back to see the now identified dragon. That means that, Didrag was shocked by the thoughts that ran through Issei's mind. What? Of course not. They may be different genders, but they took a great many years of evolution. Issei placed a hand on his chin at that answer. Is it like it's between monkeys and humans? Exactly. I think the only dragon you could look up to is your peer is Tiamat. But I'm sure that would be a bad idea. Issei's eyes widened slightly at the statement. That's right, I have to hurry. Shit, they detected us somehow. Immediately after saying those words, Issei stopped short as he watched as the two dragons that had previously caused him trouble appeared from the sky and fell in front of him with a very angry expression. Issei gritted his teeth when he saw the two dragons and immediately stood in front of the little dragon to make sure they didn't hurt her. Both dragons looked at each other confused by what they saw, to then look at Issei again. Issei blinked in confusion. What happens now? The little dragon would poke her head over Issei's back and give a gleeful snort, before happily flying towards the two dragons. The two older dragons received her little one with a few small tears on the edge of her eyes, embracing her tightly with her wings. What did I miss? Issei would wonder, really surprised to see how everything took such a drastic turn. I never would have thought those two were her parents. Issei could only watch as the little dragon was pointing at him and speaking very happily in a language he didn't understand. But he was sure that his little friend was telling her parents how they met and how she was saved by him. 
When the little dragon finished telling her story, the two older dragons looked at Issei with wide eyes and a flush of embarrassment on their cheeks. The two dragons quickly approached, causing Issei to activate her gauntlet just in case. But he was surprised when one of the dragons bowed low to him, while the other hugged him tightly. Issei blinked in confusion, and the only thing he could do was return the hug. What the hell is going on? He wondered internally. In short, the little girl told them how you saved her. As a sign of gratitude, the male dragon knelt before you, implying that you have their respect to socialize with them whenever you want, despite being a male dragon. While that the female is only thanking you, Diedrade would explain with a rather calm tone seeing that the situation did not get out of control. I see, Issei thought as she rubbed her hair with one hand, and continued to indulge the dragon with the other. In the end, this whole somewhat absurd situation had only made Issei fall behind in his work. Line jump. I'm 15 minutes late, Issei thought very nervously. Perhaps it wasn't that long, but Tiamat had shown to have a very hot temper in the short time they had met. While he was walking, the three dragons were following him from behind as they watched through the air as the cave that was always frozen now wasn't. Although there was still a threat with an impressive aura in that place. They only had one question on their minds. How the hell was it that Issei could go there without getting wiped out? Although, it was also true that it is impossible for a dragon of the same rank to have such a powerful aura. That could mean that this dragon is more, civilized, than them. Issei crossed the last tree that blocked his view to see the empty path that led to the cave. Ah, a few meters from him, was Tiamat waiting impatiently. As soon as she saw him, the dragoness hurried over to him with her typical listless expression. Issei looked down nervously as he tried to explain. I'm sorry, but... A lot of things came up, and, and, somehow. You're fine. Issei widened his eyes when he felt Tiamat surround him with a hug, resting her face on the chestnut's shoulder with a bit of regret. Issei simply didn't say anything and hugged him back, even with the surprise on his face. Tiamat slightly turned her face away to look at Issei, revealing a genuinely concerned expression. Since you took so long, I thought something had happened to you. He clarified as he cupped Issei's cheeks with her hands. Issei gave him a goofy smile. Thanks for worrying, but I'm great. She would stick her thumb up to emphasize her words. In these moments, it is when Issei realized that Tiamat not only had a serious, strict, and bloodthirsty personality. In fact, having spent so much time with a great hatred in his heart will have caused his other emotions to be buried within his being, but that did not mean that they would not come out again. Tiamat turned her face away from Issei even more and grabbed the brunette's hand with both hands, giving him a penetrating look. Who did this to you? Issei winced a little as Tiamat began to caress his wound with one of his hands. Tiamat looked up with eyes that bespoke suffering, causing the three dragons flying a few feet away to tremble in fear. The dragon stopped caressing Issei's wound, making the brunette look shocked when the pain disappeared and a small column of ice covered her entire wound. She quickly began to feel the cold burning her, but it was a more pleasant feeling than a painful one. Tiamat narrowed her eyes at the three dragons. I'll be right back. After saying those words, Tiamat disappeared from Issei's sight, causing the brunette to blink in shock at the great speed the dragon had. When he turned around, he could see how she came flying with the three dragons holding onto her snout. It would be funny, if Tiamat wasn't choking them with her powerful grip. Tiamat landed in front of Issei and tossed the three dragons to the ground like a sack of potatoes. The dragons quickly got up, fearful of what might happen. Who was it that did this to you? Tiamat would ask with a calm tone, making the atmosphere even more tense. Issei looked at his wound, then looked at Tiamat. It was the two largest dragons. But I think it was some kind of misunderstanding. Tiamat gave the two largest dragons a piercing look, a glint in her eyes that indicated pain. And good, the dragons quickly began to explain themselves with strange sounds and moans, which Issei didn't understand at all. Although Tiamat's case was completely different, since he had a hand on his chin while he nodded from time to time, indicating that he understood his language. Tiamat crossed her arms under her breasts earnestly. I see, so they thought that Issei had kidnapped their son somehow to make them both leave this territory and leave it to him. The two dragons nodded frantically several times as Issei watched all this with great astonishment. Tiamat watched the little dragon as she began to speak happily, 
and then began to circle around Issei with the same joy. Tiamat placed a hand on her chin and her listless expression changed to a small smile as she turned her gaze to Issei. I see, so you saved her and thanks to that they were able to clear up the misunderstanding. That's great, because it means that now you don't have to worry about getting through this place without other dragons attacking you again, since the dragon territories they cover a lot of meters. Issei would blink in confusion at this statement. Wait, wait, so how can you live here, if it's not your territory? Tiamat looked at the two older dragons, causing them to break out in a sweat. Because they know very well that it is not convenient for them to face me. Tiamat would declare with a bloodthirsty smile on his face. Tiamat returned to her typical listless expression as she surveyed the three dragons. Well, considering that it was all a misunderstanding, I guess I won't do anything to them. Tiamat would turn and put a hand on her hip. What's more, I even let them come here, because I see that her daughter became very friendly with Issei. Issei watched the little dragon with a big smile as she continued to circle around him. That means I found a familiar. At these words, the little dragon stopped short and looked at him carefully. Issei clenched her fist tightly with a defiant smile. With our strength, I'm sure, Issei received a strong fire attack, making his entire face go black. He widened his eyes with a bored expression on his face as he spit smoke out of his mouth. The little dragon was just watching him triumphantly. Diedrake began to laugh at this, while Tiamat lowered her head and shook her head in disappointment. You have the aura of a dragon. You can't ask another dragon to be your familiar. It's like you're insulting it, declared Tiamat, to then see Issei's face, making her worried look return to her face. Are you okay? Issei gave Tiamat a smile for her great concern towards him, making the dragon reciprocate with a small smile. Line jump. It was already a little late. The dragons had left the place, leaving only Tiamat and Issei in the cave. They were both sitting near the campfire while the brunette was telling him a story about his two best friends. The funniest thing about this is that Matsuda and Motohama had to turn to me in order to save themselves from the wrath of the Kendo women. Issei would shake his head at the end because of the attitude of her friends, while she shared the blankets with Tiamat. The dragon only increased her current smile a little, leaning a little more on Issei's shoulder. Why are you like this? Issei watched Tiamat confused. Asi Como. Tiamat opened her eyes and looked up to meet his face. You're great. Issei blinked in confusion at her statement. Brilliant. He was sure no one had paid him that kind of compliment before. Tiamat lowered her gaze again and rested her face on Issei's chest, making the brunette a little surprised. I don't quite get it either. I just think you're great, because you make me feel great. In just these two days, I've felt much better than I have in hundreds of years. That wasn't something really difficult to achieve, considering that she lived alone for a millennium, but it was a subject that she Issei didn't want to remind her of. Issei rubbed at his hair with a small blush in embarrassment. Well, you, no, you just needed someone to understand you a bit, don't you think? Issei would look down at him somewhat disgusted to see how Tiamat frowned at his words. I just, I think you were unlucky. Tiamat would look up with a frown, bumping her nose against Issei's. Too bad, if I just needed someone to understand me, why did it take so long to show up? Tiamat would give Issei a beautiful smile, causing the brunette to be surprised. In my opinion, great people are unique. Considering that it took you so long to appear, you are someone unique. Tiamat would lower his face again and lean on Issei's chest, embracing him deeply. You're great. Issei would reciprocate the hug with great surprise at Tiamat's words. I just did what anyone would have done. If I were like you say, you wouldn't be unique to me. Therefore, you wouldn't be great. You wouldn't make me feel great either. Thanks, I guess. A small blush appeared on Issei's face, feeling how Tiamat clung a little more to her body. It must be very cold. Line jump. Issei and Tiamat were drinking a juice that they made last night using the water bottles that the chestnut tree had brought as a container. Both were sitting on the already somewhat dirty blanket. Today we should take a bath. She would say Tiamat as she looked down at herself, to see that her hands had a bit of dirt. Yes, we should also take the opportunity to clean our clothes and other things. Issei would say with a bored expression. Tiamat looked at him with slightly widened eyes. Can't you materialize clothes with your magic? My magical reserves are almost nil. 
A depressive aura surrounded Issei after saying those words. Tiamat looked out of the cave, somewhat surprised by the revelation. Oh, I understand. That might be a problem if you want to become stronger. Issei looked at Tiamat surprised by what she mentioned. The dragon just looked at him seriously. If your magic reserves are close to zero, you can only rely on melee combat or bladed weapons. Honestly, I have no idea what the underdeveloped lizard can do, nor do I care to know. But if you really want to become stronger, you should improve your physical condition and your technique. Diedrake would grumble under his breath, because it had been a long time since he had been called that way and for a moment he had thought that he had forgotten. Issei gave her a smile as he clenched his fist. I've already been practicing my fitness. Although lately I've been a bit stuck with my progress. He would say the last bit embarrassed. Tiamat got a little closer to Issei and began to touch the muscles of his arms, making the brunette blush a little. I can see that you have been training hard. But there is no point in increasing your power if you lack technique. Tiamat stopped touching him and supported his knees on the ground very close to him. Being the Sekariote, sooner or later you will become powerful. But that also means that you will face powerful opponents, and believe me they will have good technique and combat experience that will crush you instantly. Issei lowered his head down at the revelation. Then, how can I improve my technique and power at the same time? I've already asked the president, but she doesn't know how to help me. She only told me that I should improve my physical condition even more to have a special training. Tiamat would give a derisive little snort. That girl is just like you, she has no experience in really dangerous combat. Although, I must say that she is right about something. I can see that your physical condition is not good, but it is not bad either. You have to keep improving that aspect and there will come a time where your body can withstand the power of the sacred gear much better. But it is not convenient for you to only exercise, you should also engage in friendly combat against other people who can teach you new techniques. Tiamat would give him a proud smile. Like me, Issei blinked in shock. That means that, after the bath, I'll teach you a thing or two. Tiamat would interrupt with a small smile as he nodded. Follow me, I know the perfect place. Tiamat got up from the ground, being followed by Issei as he took all of his things to wash them. As Issei collected his things, he gave Tiamat a curious look. Oh rather, how she was. The dragon was at the edge of the cave, so the wind made her hair wave in a majestic way. She always had that serious expression that didn't ruin her beauty, along with her gorgeous face and jaw-dropping body. Why are you looking at me so much? Tiamat asked with a raised eyebrow. Issei just looked away embarrassed by the previous thoughts. I was just wondering how someone as young as you could fall in love with Diedrake. I mean, Diedrake was physically 40 years old at the time, and you're much younger than that. Tiamat looked down and crossed her arms seriously. I don't know why it happened, I just fell in love with him. I guess there's no such thing as an age difference when it comes to love. Tiamat turned around and started to leave, being followed by Issei. When I fell in love with him. I had just turned 20,021 years old. Now, it's been a little over a thousand years since then. Although it was a long time ago, my physical appearance is still 25 years old, just like back then. End of chapter. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe so you won't miss the next part.